In this video, you'll learn how to integrate Google Login to your PHP website. This will allow users to authenticate using their existing Google account, without having to create an account directly on your site with yet another username and password. Once the user has authenticated with their Google account, you can get the attributes of that account, such as the email, name and so on. Let's start by creating a new file called index.php. In here, let's add some HTML for a basic HTML document, including a head element with a title and a body element. Inside the body, let's add a sign-in link. For the value of the href attribute, we need to link to the Google sign-in page. This link needs to be generated as it contains unique identifiers that associate it with your Google account. To generate this URL, we'll use the Google API client package, which we can install with Composer. If you need more details on how to install third-party packages using Composer, there's a link to a video all about this in the description. So, on the command line, from the same folder where we just created the index.php file, let's run the Composer install command to install that package. This has installed that package and its dependencies into the vendor folder. Now we can use this package. So before the HTML, let's add some PHP tags, then require Composer's autoloader. This will load the class files in the package automatically. So we can then create an object of the client class from the Google namespace. To use this class to generate an authentication link, we need to call the following methods to provide it with certain values. Set client ID, set client secret, and set redirect URI. We'll provide values for these in a moment. To get these values, you need a Google account. Note that this is separate from the account the user will use to authenticate to your site. This is your Google account, which you need in order for this to work. Once you have an account, go to console.cloud.google.com and you should see the Google Cloud dashboard. First, we need to create a project. So you can click on the Create or Select a Project link, or click Select a Project at the top, and click the New Project link. For the name, I'll call it Sign In Tutorial. The location is optional, so we'll just leave the default value there, and click the Create button. Once it's created, click the Select Project link to select it. This will go to the Project Dashboard. Once in there, from the navigation menu, select the APIs and Services option. In there, click on the OAuth Consent Screen option. The Consent Screen is the screen that the users will see when prompted to sign in with their Google account. Select the Type as External, then click the Create button. The App Name is the name that will appear on this screen. I'll call it Example App. You then need to enter the User Support Email. I'll just select the Gmail address associated with this account. There are other options you can set to customise this screen, such as a logo and various links, but these are optional so I'll leave them blank. One more field that isn't optional is the Developer Contact Information email, where you should enter your email address. Then at the bottom I'll click the Save and Continue button. The scopes are optional, so I'll just click on the Save and Continue button again at the bottom. As are the test users, so we'll just click the Save and Continue button again. Once the consent screen has been created, select the Credentials option from the menu on the left. Then click on Create Credentials at the top, and from the menu that's shown, select OAuth Client ID. For the application type, we'll select Web Application, and for the name, we'll just accept the default. One value we do need to set on this screen is an authorised redirect URI. This is the URL that the authentication process will redirect to once it's complete. As I'm developing locally, I'll specify a script called redirect.php on my local host server. Note that this script doesn't exist yet, I'll create it in a moment. Next, just click the Create button at the bottom. This will display two values that we need to copy and paste into our code, the client ID and the client secret. 
So let's copy the client ID value and back in the code where we're calling the set client ID method, we'll pass this value in as a string. Note that we need to enclose the copied value in quotes. Then let's do the same for the client secret value. So we'll copy this value and paste it in the code where we're calling the set client secret method, again enclosing the value in quotes. For the set redirect URI method, I'll enter the same value I specified in the console. Now in a production application, you wouldn't hard code these config settings in here like this, you'd store them in a separate configuration file. In this video, I'll keep it simple and just leave them here, but I have a separate video on how to properly do this, and there's a link in the description. Next, we need to add scopes. These set the information that we'll be able to get from the user once they log into their Google account. First, let's add the email scope, which lets us get their email address. Then the profile scope, which lets us get their public profile details, such as their name. We'll have a look at exactly what details are available in a moment. Then we generate the authorization URL using the create auth URL method. Down in the HTML, we can output this URL inside the href property of the login link. Let's try that, and if we look at the source, we can see the link that has been generated. If we click it, we're taken to the Google authentication screen, where the user can log in with their existing account or create a new one. Before we continue, we need to create the script that will be called when the authentication process has been completed. So let's create that file, which I called redirect.php, and let's add the PHP opening tag. In here, we're going to need to use the Google client package again. To keep this video simple, I'll just copy this code from the top of index.php where we're including Composer's autoloader, creating an object of the Google client class and configuring it with these method calls. And I'll paste it at the top of the redirect.php script. In practice, you wouldn't repeat yourself like this and you'd probably have these values in a separate configuration file, but that's beyond the scope of this video. I do have a video on how to securely store configuration settings like this, and there's a link in the description. For now, we'll just repeat this code so you can see how it works. When this redirect script is called, it will be passed an authorization code in the query string. We can then exchange this for an access token. Before we do that, let's check that a code has been passed in the query string. If not, then the login was unsuccessful, so let's just exit the script with a message. If we do have the code, first we need to exchange it for an access token, which we can do with the fetch access token with authcode method, passing in the code from the query string. Then we call the set access token method on the client object, passing in the token. The actual token value string is in an element with an index of access token in the token array variable. Now we've done this, we can get the user data. First, let's create an object of the Google OAuth2 class, passing in the client object. Then we can get an object that represents the user information. This object is an object of this user info class. In the source code of this package, we can see that this class has attributes such as family name, given name, and so on. Let's just output some of these properties. Note that it's possible that not all of these contain values, depending on what the user supplied when they created their Google account. Let's give that a try. If I click the sign-in link and allow authentication with my Google account, we get these values printed out. So the user has authenticated using their Google account, and we have been given access to these details of their account. So what you could do here is save these values to a database, use the session to log in a user to your site, and so on. Note that once you've allowed access to this app with your Google account, you don't have to do it again. This choice is saved, so you're not prompted again. If I try and log in again using the account I'm still signed in with, it logs in automatically. If you want to remove this for testing, you can do this in your Google account settings. 
Go to myaccount.google.com slash security and in the section on connections to third-party apps and services, you can delete the connection to this example application. So if you try and sign in again, it will prompt you for permission again. So this is how you can use Google for user authentication and get the details of the Google account of the user that's logging in. There's a link to all the source code shown in this video in the description, along with links to sites shown and relevant videos. If you found this useful, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Many thanks to my supporters on Ko-Fi, and as always, thank you for watching.